six cores, 12 threads, 10 years later. Yes, Virginia, you heard me correctly. Intel sold six core, 12 thread CPUs in the form of the i7-980X and the Xeon X5675 and related CPUs on the X58 motherboard LGA 1366 socket. You can currently buy the X5675 six core, 12 thread CPU for $30 delivered or less on eBay from sellers with very reputable feedback and many, many CPUs in stock. The supply of these chips is plentiful. The motherboards are another story. This is an example listing of an ASUS P16 motherboard with the IO shield. This is the exact model that I have, not the exact motherboard. This is somebody, some other seller, but this is the motherboard that I did my testing on and it's $100 delivered, $88 plus $12. This is within the US. And this is what you can expect to pay if you want a decent X58 motherboard. And this is where we come to the crux of the problem. If you currently own an X58 motherboard, maybe you have an i7-920 purchased 12 years ago, almost, in November of 2008 when they came out, and you've made do with it all this time, you've maybe replaced your graphics card once or twice, added an SSD, maybe you added some RAM to it, and it's feeling long in the tooth, but you just don't have the money to upgrade, no worries. For $30 or less, you can buy an X5675, you can drop it in place, set the base clock to 166, and you'll have a 3.8 gigahertz, six core, 12 thread CPU for an amazing value in terms of an upgrade. But if you have to buy the motherboard, then it makes zero sense. Because $100 for a motherboard, plus $30 for the CPU, plus something for a cooler, because if you don't have the motherboard, you don't have a cooler. If you spend $50 on a decent either uh, air tower cooler, such as the Sky 5, which is gonna run you $50 for a six heat pipe direct contact cooler, or $50 for a 120 millimeter liquid cooler, you're looking at $180. Hold the farm, because that is a terrible deal, because this exists. For $235 total, you get a Ryzen 7 2700 8 core 16 thread 4.1 gigahertz max boost turbo CPU. You get an ASRock B450M Steel Legend motherboard. You get a Wraith Spire RGB cooler. The Spires are the good ones, they're not too loud. And then you also get a Game Pass plus your choice of a free game. $235 is only about $50 more expensive than a 10-year-old used CPU, a 12-year-old used motherboard, some new cooler that you pick out for it, on an obsolete platform that frankly does a good enough job if it's all you've got, but simply does not hold a candle to modern platforms. A Ryzen 7 2700 will demolish these CPUs every which way from Sunday, both in single core performance as well as multi-threaded performance, support for modern instruction sets, support for modern security protocols. A lot of these older platforms are suffering from some of the old Intel security bugs, some of which have been fixed, some of which haven't, and frankly, some of which may never be fixed. So this is not a solution if you're building a computer. This is only a solution if you already have the motherboard. I mentioned base clock overclocking earlier. The X5675s are locked CPUs. You cannot change their multiplier. The CPU I'm actually using here is an i7-980X, which is actually the same thing. It just, that was the consumer name of the CPU, whereas the Xeon X5675, 60s, 50s, etc. Those were sold in servers to Dell and HP, etc. Those are multiplier locked. They were never meant to run at anything other than their stock speeds. So if you buy an X5675 and you don't change anything in your BIOS, it'll run at three gigahertz because it has a 23 multiplier and the base clock on a X58 motherboard is 133. 133 times 23 is 3.06 gigahertz. If you change the base clock to 166, keep in mind it will change a variety of other settings. You'll have to be aware of that. But beyond that point, 23 times 166 gives you a clock speed of 3.8 gigahertz. That's actually faster than what you're seeing here, but it's slower than what the chip is capable of. I have run mine at 4.5 gigahertz, 
And it does that just fine, but it does take a very impressive nearly 200 base clock, which not all motherboards are going to do, and it can throw off some other timings. So it takes more tweaking and messing around in the various settings of your BIOS to make that work. With an i7-980X, yeah, just don't have to care. In my particular case, I went in, I typed in a 34 multiplier instead of a 23, and boom, instant 4.5 gigahertz clock speed. Now mine took 1.4 volts to run at 4.5 gigahertz fixed in a stable configuration across a variety of tests, and that includes 7-zip, Cinebench, etc., not just games. But at 1.4 volts, it still isn't that hot, even on a 120 millimeter liquid cooler. These old chips ran much cooler than the current modern ones did. They're both soldered. The current chips, they've gone back to soldering, but it still isn't as good as these old chips with their larger surface area and more heat dissipation had. So frankly, these things run at about 4.5 gigahertz pretty well, assuming, of course, you get a chip that is happy to do so, along with a motherboard that has the power delivery and components that can handle it. Now, before we get into why not just buy an i7-980X, we'll get to that. What you're seeing here is me stopping the benchmark. I actually have F9 and F10 on the keyboard set to the benchmark keys. F10 and Fortnite brings up the menu. But I stopped the benchmark, and then I restarted it here. And the reason I did that is because the first five minutes of this, with the exception of that one guy I shot... The first five minutes of this was just collecting resources and is not necessarily reflective of the game. I work really hard to try to benchmark the portion of the game that actually counts. I can't always say it's perfect, but I do make an effort to do that. And so now we have a fresh start to a benchmark that for the next eight minutes or so, it's going to be just the combat portion of the game, not the resource collection. So anytime you see my benchmark numbers, I want you to be aware that I am putting thought into testing the parts that matter. How fast the resource gathering works doesn't really matter. This part is the part that actually matters. Okay, back to why not just buy an i7-980X? Why are we talking about this Xeon X5675 with base clock overclocking and, and having to adjust QPI settings? What? J j this is multiplier unlocked. After all, I bought one, so shouldn't you? No, and here's why. X5675s are currently running about $30 on eBay. i7-980Xs are running about $100 on eBay. You really aren't going to get these much cheaper unless you just manage to luck into a deal. And of course, if you do, if you find an i7-980X for $50, bucks, by all means, grab it. But these are three times the price for the same chip. It is true that having to adjust your base clock from 133 to 166 or even 200 if you can get 4.6 out of it is less convenient than a multiplier overclock. But if you're going to spend $100 on the chip, you kind of destroyed the point. You might as well upgrade to Ryzen 7 and blow this away in terms of performance. And for those of you who think, well, the frame rates are okay, isn't it basically the same? No, it's not. The entire computing experience is not remotely the same. If you're still using an old first-gen system and you say, but my frame rate's okay, I'm over 60 frames a second, I've got games, I'm over 100 frames a second, I upgraded my video card, there's nothing new, there's no need to get a new computer, is there? Need is a highly subjective word. You don't need to play video games at all. You could go the rest of your life without playing another video game ever. If you're watching my channel, that's probably not you, although there, I do have viewers who are not gamers and aren't that interested in gaming performance, and I certainly appreciate all of you. Thanks for being here. But gamers do make up a high percentage of my audience, and since you want to play games and you want to have a nice experience, let me put forth this question. Is the only thing you care about your FPS numbers? Your average frame rate in a chart, your average, your 1% low and your 0.1% low. Is that your single, sole, solitary metric for success, all other information to the wind? If that's the case, no, clearly you don't. We're running at 1440p high detail, which in Fortnite automatically does 1080p render resolution. And we're currently getting over 120 frames per second without a problem. Clearly, there is no reason whatsoever for anybody to buy a new computer. But that's ridiculous. Of course there is, because there's much more to a computer than an average frame rate. There is game load time. There is game update time. There's multitasking. There's watching videos. There's opening your web browser. There's uh, copying files, reading files. There's 
doing a lot of different things with your computer besides just displaying frames on the screen. And then that brings us to the one point that I cannot show you in a YouTube video. You are not watching this game being played live. You are not in front of the monitor controlling the game. It's good enough, and for most people, it's fine. But what you're not seeing in this perfect 60 frame per second video captured video are hitches and stutters that are not captured by the recording. They're not obvious. They're not a big deal. They're not going to ruin your gaming experience, but they do exist. Allow me to give you a really bad analogy. Humans existed for 20,000 years without heating and air conditioning in their homes. They existed for 20,000 years without indoor plumbing and toilets. People have used outhouses and frankly just dealt with the elements and the weather for tens of thousands of years. Raise your hand if you're watching this video and you're prepared to give up indoor plumbing, indoor water, toilets, heating and air conditioning, and all the other modern conveniences of life. You don't need any of them. You won't die due to a lack of those things. But I don't think anybody watching this who currently has them is prepared to give them up. Once you've moved to a modern platform, you will notice things that improve the overall computing experience in ways that don't show up in a pre-recorded YouTube video and don't show up in frame rate charts but take it from somebody who has all the computers and all of the CPUs and all of the systems and test them all the time. I move from system to system to system and the differences really stand out when you move between them. You aren't going to die if you have to game on an X5675. In fact, I would submit that you can play any modern game on an X5675, any game. Battlefield 5 will play on it. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare will play on it. World of Warcraft will play on it. They will not be as nice and it will not multitask as well as a Ryzen 7 2700 would. But they will all play and they will all be playable. They will just not be a premium experience. If you have an old i7-920 and you don't have a lot of money, $30 will upgrade you to six cores. You can set it to either 3.8 gigahertz or 4.6 gigahertz, depending upon the quality of your cooler and a little bit of silicon lottery in luck. You will get anywhere between a one to a two gigahertz clock speed increase, a 50% core count increase, all for $30. That is a deal all day long. And if you don't have the option to move to a Ryzen, if you don't have the option to upgrade to something faster, yes, I would do it because you'll get a better experience that will be smoother. It won't be a whole lot faster. It will be a little bit faster, but the biggest difference is everything will be smoother, less hitches. Your multitasking performance will improve. Newer games like Battlefield 5 will run much better on six cores than they will four. And if that's your budget, if that's what you can do, then go for it. On the other hand, do you have $235? Go get a Ryzen 7 2700 and a B450 motherboard. Be on a modern platform that isn't 10 to 12 years old, that's still getting security fixes, patches, and enhancements, and has an upgrade future. You can buy a B450 now and a Ryzen 7 2700, and then you can wait a couple of years, and then you can even upgrade it to like a 16 core chip in a few years if you want to. There's a future to that platform. So 30 bucks to upgrade your old one deal, but if you don't have it, don't bother. Skip it, get Ryzen, because Ryzen is just amazing. The, the options and performance we have available today, I am excited to be in the PC business again because we finally have stuff going on. We have an innovation and change, which frankly, thanks to Intel, didn't really happen for a lot of years. How many years did the consumer desktop platform sit at four cores? Even an i7-7700K just a couple of years ago was four cores and six threads, even though Intel clearly had six core chips a decade ago, but they charged a lot of money for them and didn't make them available to consumers because, well, they didn't have to. Thank you, AMD, for bringing us Ryzen and introducing us to modern high core count CPUs. I will have a variety of links down in the video description below. Links to Amazon, Newegg, and eBay for the Ryzen 7 2700 and to the motherboard I showed you before. 
I will also put links to the i7-980X and the Xeon X5775 to eBay, but again, they're only worth considering if you already have an X58 motherboard, which is why I am not going to bother putting links to X58 motherboards down there because frankly, I really, really don't think you should buy one. I don't think they make any sense. Even if you find one for $75 versus $100, it just, it's too out of date to spend that kind of money if you don't have the cooler, if you don't have the RAM. If, if, if you don't already have the system, then seriously, it's 10 years old. Don't bother. 122 frames per second average, 61 1% low, 18.1% low. You saw the real-time numbers, but I thought I would make a chart anyway because some people like charts. Comment section below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Slightly different format to what I typically do. Definitely older content than I typically do. Hit that like button if you liked it. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button to actually be notified when new videos come out. And then, of course, there's various ways to support down in the video description below. You can join our Patreon. You can hit the join button on YouTube. You can support us on Floatplane. You can subscribe to us on Twitch. And, of course, you can simply watch like, subscribe, and share the videos with your friends because that is a wonderful, wonderful way to support and I greatly appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.